To my right, in the blue corner, weighing in at 235 pounds from Oil Trop, Texas, Dirty Dutch Mantel. To my left, making his return to Houston Wrestling, weighing in at 261 pounds, from Kansas City, Missouri, Hacksaw Butch Reed. So this, then, is the return to action of Hacksaw Butch Reed after a couple of months away in which he have dis has distinguished himself throughout the Midwest and has returned to Houston where fans have missed him. Let's put it that way. A lot of inquiries always about Hacksaw Butch Reed and when is he returning? He's back and here he is ready to face Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel, he of the huge horse whip and the bell has sounded now to give us a look at Hacksaw Butch Reed as he moves in toward an opponent to knows his wrestling and doesn't hesitate to apply it, but he also knows how to apply the extra things that can get a man in all kinds of trouble out in that ring. <laughs> he is a man who never hesitates to find an opening and then to make use of it. So, Mantel catches a ribbing from the audience on one side and Mantel is trying to show his muscles against a man who has more muscle than Mantel could ever possibly use. Mantel has a solid wrestler's body, and Hacksaw Butch Reed has that touch of weight training that always gives the muscles definition, always gives added power, and Reed is ready. And you know, if you want to know whether Reed is ready, just watch Mantell. He's not rushing in there. He was trying to cool off that opening edge, trying to uh, confuse him. And there's the power of Hacksaw Butch Reed. There's the man who can get on that bench press and press 400, 450, 500, go over 500, depending on how he feels that day. He's a man with a great deal of, of, of power. Dutch Mantel. Mantel, of course, is the classic wrestler when he sticks to it, who says you don't need all that muscle. We can do a job on a man without it. But he recognizes the power now of Butch Reed, and you see him trying to, again, throw up that smoke screen, again, keep Reed from putting forth with 100% effort constantly by changing the pace of the match. Side headlock for the Dutchman. Finding the nose of Butch Reed, getting after him to lay the knuckles in there and to keep the referee on the blind side. That's Mantel. He come off with a shoulder butt on a man who should know what to do with it. Oh. Right under the whiskers, if you'll pardon me for coining a phrase. But as he went under those whiskers, he found solidly the chin of Dutch Mantel. So there's Reed, and now with Mantell in the picture, you see a man who is worried about the next move that he's gonna make. That last one didn't work out so well. Reverse arm bar, nicely done. That's a big arm. And it's one thing to get the hold, another thing to extract the maximum punishment out of it, and it's a third thing to be able to hold it. 
Did he let go? And believe me, it was the better part of valor that he recognized the fact that it, he would have had his block knocked off if he hadn't. So Reed stands there and tells the referee that he's got something in his trunks. And the referee look, look, looks at the, at the garment. In the, in the case of Dutch Mantel, Mantel wears a pair of trunks underneath that outside garment. It's always better to be safe. So as they come together, they clash in that referee's hold, and it's Reed against the ropes, and Reed making the move. Look at that Dutchman. He, he got out of the ring so fast, his head got ahead of his feet. He started out with his feet, and the whole body went sliding across there and out. And I don't blame him. Reed is a formidable foe. Five minutes have gone by. And arm drag, and he bounced him to the deck. So Mantel is a master at throwing up the smoke screens, a master at keeping the referee busy doing everything except watching exactly what he's, what he's doing. He ripped across the face of uh, Butch Reed that time with that bandage on his uh, right hand. And again, he used that same uh, rough and rugged ad adhesive bandage to rip across the face. Duggan, or rather, Reed down, and Mantell trying to make sure he stays there by getting in behind him. The crowd now starts their staccato clapping. They're trying to root the Hacksaw home. Plus, with Hacksaw Butch Reed in the Mid-South area again, that means we've got two Hacksaws. We've got Jim Duggan and and Reed. Now you'll note that Mantell has gone after Butch Reed's arms. There are a lot of wrestlers who would disagree with him and because they know that the strongest part of Butch Reed are those powerful arms of his. And what you should be doing is looking for the weakest part of, his, of the opponent instead of the strongest. Mantell knows it, but sometimes you get too proud to look around for the weak ones and you want to show the fans that you can beat a guy by going after his strong points. It's usually when you lose a match. So Reed fights to try to jerk that arm out. There's the pull down. And Reed from that kneeling position as he battles back against the um, varied attack. And now you see what he's doing. Now he's going after the knee. And he's going after a knee that is wearing a uh, support, an orthopedic support. And slamming it down against the sharp edge of that. And it is a sharp edge, I'll tell you. Not a cutting edge, but uh, most certainly not a rounded one. And as your leg hits, you're in trouble. Mantell, a workman in that ring, a man who knows his way around. He's not, not going to be pushed around by anyone without putting up a fight. And now as he gets Hacksaw Butch Reed in the legs, he, and he starts to work on his head. So he's going from one end to the other, and that leaves only the middle. Crotch hold, the lift, the slam, and here is Mantell with that elbow. He's on top. We could have a fall. There's one, there's two, but you don't pin Hacksaw Reed without a maximum of effort. Oh, how he hit. Oh. 
Now there is an opportunity for Butch Reed. As Butch rises, he is ready. He was ready there with his foot. He was ready with his fist. And now as he moves in on Mantel, he is determined. Bad move by Butch Reed. He followed in too closely behind Mantell. Mantell got out of the way and he hit into the turnbuckle over the shoulder. This could be a bad spot for, for Reed. And uh, Reed is trying to shake it off. And as he shakes it off, he starts to swing around and lay it in there. Well, we've got Mantell hugging the ropes. And it's, remember, those ropes are, are tight. They are steel cables covered with rubber, and they don't give. Swing, and he found his mark and came in there solidly. Ten minutes have gone by. Oh, referee Tony Olivas was trying to move past there, and now we've got Dutch Mantell. Oh, 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 he, Mantel's going in there for his whip, and that whip ha has a handle, is a solid hunk of wood. Mantel, and Mantel may have won a match in, in, in just that fashion. No, Butch Reed's got out, and we mentioned the power of his arms. We mentioned the hours he puts him in, in the gymnasium with those Huge weights, it just paid off. There's no easy way to get any place. And Butch Reed got there where he is, the hard way. Drop kick. And now as he goes after Mantell, Mantell puts a stop to it and tries to set him up. Close line, and oh, a beauty. So, the lift, he's gonna lift him over his head. He does. Crashes him. There's the count. There it is. Hacksaw Butch Reed takes a win over Dutch Mantel and this crowd in the Sam Houston Coliseum, the home of Houston wrestling, the home of wrestling in Houston, gives him an ovation.